Hey everybody, and welcome back to Zelda's Play, The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. Yeah, this time we're heading to the game's second dungeon, The Cave of Flames. And uh, as Eslo says, it's, it's, it's a hot one hot in here. We're at the yeah. <laughs> it's a hot one, yep. Uh, that Eslo always likes to tell me it's a hot one, when I already know it's a hot one. <laughs> we're, in the, uh, we're at the top of Mount Crenel here, searching for the fire <laughs> element. So, yeah, fittingly, it's... Uh, Pretty warm spot. Yep. Ooh, was um, that a Dennis reference, oh, by the way? I was so random. But <laughs> yeah. It was, right? <laughs> yeah, it okay. was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I hope other people got that that was always sunny, otherwise, I just look very strange. Yeah. Shouting <laughs> like, about. I saw that oh. say it's always a hot one. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this, uh, this dungeon's got bob ombs, mm -hmm. which is um, kind of reminds me of. Uh, um, Link's, Link's Awakening, Awakening which had kind of... a lot of Mario enemies in it. Um, this one isn't uh -huh. really a Mario enemy confirmed, right? It's not actually a bob bomb, or is it? Oh, okay. I think, and spiky, I think they are cool bob bombs, yeah. And uh, spiny shells yeah. or blue shells or whatever. <laughs> These guys who, um... oh yeah, well, as I will tell us that, uh, yeah, you can't just damage them with your sword, like, so I can't do that. Uh, I have to flip them over by bumping them with my shield, and then it makes them vulnerable. Yep. Which, you know, um, you only do for a couple of minutes. Uh, I think probably only these two spiny beetles before the dungeon's item will be able to sort them out for us. Uh -huh. Which uh, isn't the compass. Little... Uh, but at least you got the compass. Which isn't the time. compass, yeah. <laughs> First compass I've got in this run through of the game yeah. since I missed it the first time. Not oh, like well. it's needed, uh, um, though. Oh, okay. And nice. And a like, like. You know, I, I a dislike like, like, or like, a rupee like. I don't like like likes. <laughs> I just want to say like a bunch in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're as annoying in this game as they ever are. You can't get too close, or they. Oh, these. Will they suck your there. shield off? I think the ones in this game are rupee like, so they only. Cipher, uh, siphon rupees. Oh, so like, 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 like rupees. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Know, but, um, yeah, they're they're very annoying in this. Um, but you know, it's cool. I think they're a good classic Zelda enemy. Yeah. Um. Uh, and yeah, this is uh, one of this dungeon's main gimmicks is minecarts, which you know is always good in a fire temple. I think. Uh, one thing Tears of the Kingdom's uh, Fire Temple did really well, I think, was hello, <laughs> was uh, minecarts, and uh, yeah, they're, they're in this as well. Yeah, which makes sense. Um, uh, Malari told us that this was a mine. Of course, it, yeah, Spirit Tracks did minecarts. Yeah, uh, I mean, the whole game was well, I mean, on rails, but you know, this, there was literally a fire temple that had mine carting in it as well. I mean, the boss, I believe. True. Although, this technically predates Spirit Track, so I think we've got to give Minish Cap another win. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met uh, uh, before <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom. Before Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, yeah you I know what you mean. That. Yeah, but for a Fire Temple, this doesn't really uh -huh. seem like a Fire Temple. Because it's... Uh, no, uh, it's only kind of later on yeah. that we start seeing some lava, but mm. let's see what happens when we hop in the minecart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hearing young so, yeah. scream just on loop because <laughs> it's not long Looped enough. over and over. Yeah, because it's not long enough to <laughs> last the whole ride. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, Ezlo was not very happy with that. Um, although he accuses Link of grinning, even though he didn't sound very happy, but apparently he was. Apparently maybe, maybe Link enjoyed it like uh, he was on a roller coaster or something. I mean, it must have been somewhat fun. Uh, he was it may have been screams of... Uh, they sound like streams of terror, but they're probably screams of excitement. Who's having a good time? Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, Maybe. don't you scream exactly. your lungs off when you're, you know, on a, I don't know, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, Where's this guy? I mean, I don't know, like, you're, you're out of, what am I trying to say? Like, <laughs> on a roller coaster, holy crap, I could not think of the word for saying, I'm like on a mine car. When would you ever be on a mine <laughs> car in real life? Yes, all the time, mate. Yeah. <laughs> love mining. <laughs> but I love that you said the word roller coaster like five seconds before you. Right, and then I like, just blanked it. out. Yeah, it happens uh -huh. to me a bit too much. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, maybe maybe that's right. Maybe it was like a roller coaster filling. Bit like uh, what was his name from Skyward Sword? Gortram. And yeah. His uh, roller coaster addiction. Mm -hmm. So it is weird how Ezlo didn't fall off. Like. That he was going yeah, so true. fast that yeah, it's weird that Ezlo was able to stay on. He's on tight, you know. Yeah. Um, but here we get our Minish portal. Like uh, like you were saying, the the first dungeon was entirely Minish sized, mm -hmm. uh, but this time we get a bit of both. And this one, 
uh, while the others seem kind of more natural, like a tree stump or a rock, this one seems more of like a man-made. Yeah, it looks portal, really cool, and sadly, it doesn't, doesn't have, have an animation. animation. Yeah, that's I know. Sucks. Oh. I'd love to see what the inside of that looked like. Yeah, because you had the mushrooms inside the tree stump, mm -hmm. or the those kind of green crystals in the. Uh, yep, in the rock. Uh, um, in the rock one, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but this is just like, you know what, we're not even gonna bother animating it, but, um... Uh, yeah, it is cool to see you, like, now does... solve this dungeon in, in minish form, and get to places you've uh -huh. never reached before, like this piece of heart. I don't know, can these... Okay, these keys can't... Oh, oh they no, can. they can hit me! I thought it was too small, uh-huh. But, yeah, again, this game gives you a piece of heart, but not quite, because we can't get it. Yeah. We'll have to come back to that when we're big. Mm. So, you just kind of... Oh. Walk around as minish uh, form. I think you're going the wrong way. Yeah, you want to go through those actual yeah. little doors. I mean, they literally tell uh -huh. you like it's four minish. Um, yeah, with a little arrow pointing to where you need to go. Yeah, quite handy. Uh, can you walk uh, on those yeah, as a minish, or are you just too small? I'm just curious. Like, would it even I start can, shaking? Give it a go. Oh, no, you can't even reach uh. it. It's there's a gap in between. <laughs> Link can't reach. Oh, I know what you mean though. Yeah, would it even collapse under the weight of a minish? Probably yeah. not. If you could even stand on it. But now some lava uh, and some what? fog, which looks kind of cool. Oh, true. A bit distracting. And, and this is what I meant because uh, a lot of people were saying this game is so gorgeous. It, it doesn't need an uh, HD 2D remaster or remaster whatsoever. But I feel like for sections like this where they have fog, like that 2D pixel art fog doesn't look as good as, let's say we had 3D fog, right? But still with the pixel art top-down sprite work that Minish Cap has because it does look really good. Um, and that's timeless, but like, yeah, the effects, like the fog, I feel like could look better if they were updated. And that's why I would like to see a HD 2D remake. Again, keep the sprite work the same, but change environmental lighting and yeah. uh, stuff so like, like that. So um, like the Minish Woods as a well. Kind of best of, a best of both worlds yeah. thing with a... Uh, so not just... So, because, yeah, when everyone says they want to remake... Uh, uh, what they want to remake of the Minish Cap, I always imagine something quite drastically different. Like, you know, Link's like Awakening. Uh, I think Switch. exactly. It's such a beautiful game, the Switch Link's Awakening, but it is very different to the original game. Um, yeah. And I really don't want that for the Minish Cap. I, I love the sprite work; it's so so gorgeous, and I'd hate to see that go. Um, but you're right. Something that combined that with maybe modern lighting and modern and i've just realized we should have upgraded the wallet oh yeah <laughs> all these rupees we're gonna How get do you do it in this game? Pointless. i don't even remember the wallet yeah. um well we we can buy a wallet upgrade from the shop um uh -huh. then the second one i'm sure it's a great fairy i think that upgrades it again okay. um i'm pretty sure it is that's definitely the way for bomb bags wait uh, we'll find out as we play anyway. I'm pretty sure it's a great fairy that upgrades it the second time anyway. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. But now more, uh, uh hat gliding. More <laughs> hat gliding on Eslo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool feature. <laughs> Never gets old. Yep. I'm assuming yeah. it's in inspiration of, uh, the Wind Waker's deck relief. It's just so reminiscent. I mean, the way Eslo is the equivalent of a deck relief. Um, True. Yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah, probably. I mean, this game takes so heavily from the Wind Waker that, yeah, they probably did see that and think, um, yeah, we should probably have some sort of gliding in this. Because like we've said a few times, it, it, it's great, but the gliding does feel a little bit janky just because it's a, it's a flat 2D game and you're trying to navigate in 3D when you're gliding because obviously the, you're on the Z-axis as well, so it just... I don't know, it doesn't quite work. Yeah, the depth um, perception is a bit well off, it, uh, but you got to use your imagination. Uh -huh. And, and it uh, somehow does the job. Like, I'm not, I can't hate on it too much. It definitely, you can definitely get an idea of where you're at. Like, it, it, it does it pretty well. It's weird to see 3D and actual 2D sprite work is always unique to me, you know? Um, and, you know, there's so many games. Like, the Game Boy Advance had had, had so many actual 3D games, but it was really just... 2D sprite work manipulated into a 3D style, which is really cool to see. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Here's a, a tease for the dungeon's item. There's a, a minecart that's upside down, so unusable. Mm -hmm. uh, wonder if we can change that at some point. Yeah. I'd say the best... Oh, and speaking... Just to kind of um, complete my thought there, uh, I'd say the best example yeah, yeah. of like a 3D, 2D style would be the Star Fox, um, Star Fox 2 or whatever that they finally gave us on Nintendo oh, Switch yeah. Online. 
Uh, like that uh -huh. looks insane, right? That was using like a, a futuristic chip that that SNES didn't originally have or something. Yeah, or, like, what the was it called? Was like using. um, uh, something seven was it? Or uh... Uh, it sounded cool. I know the one you mean. Yeah. It's the, it's the same same thing that uh, makes like Super Mario Kart and F Zero possible, where it yeah. kind of just stretches out a flat sprite uh, and gives the impression of a, a huge 3D world. Yep. Uh, which is amazing. I love that, and that's. Uh, wait, there's a an annoying mini boss fight in a second, but yeah, like the, as systems get more powerful, the restriction on game design is obviously less. Yeah. But I think that means you get sometimes you get less interesting games coming out of it when they had to work with such insane restrictions. Right. Because it was um, so in it's so certain. cool. It is mind blowing to see this weird pixel art 3D because you know it's not really 3D. Uh -huh. It's an illusion. And it's so unique yeah. now. Yeah. It's so unique. But uh, let's see. Let's see what awaits us down here. I'm sure nothing bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, choo -choo's. Excellent. Okay. Lots of them. Uh -huh. So these are very annoying because these are armored. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, you can do the perfect spin. No. <laughs> I timed it completely wrong. Yeah. But yeah, these guys, um, yeah, you can't hit them when they're spiked balls, I guess. Uh, so they're like, I don't know, metal choo choo's, armored choo choo's, something like that. Uh -huh. You can hit a lot, but they're very annoying. Um, I wonder oh, how they're their really choo -choo cool spin on the choo choo, though. Probably kill you. Yeah, right. Probably be like, <laughs> uh, like drinking um, <laughs> mercury or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 or like lead poisoning or something. I don't think it'd be very nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, beating them gives us the dungeon's item, which is a uh, kind of a little bit of a, a link to the past throwback. I think, don't you? Like, Kane, yeah, yeah. Like I don't. A, when I think of Kane, I don't even think of the Zelda series outside of a link to the past. Um, so. This immediately uh -huh. gets me that vibe, and it seems unfitting. Yes, but exactly. This one, the Cane of Paki, is a we a bit of a weird one. So it, yeah, it's mainly used for flipping stuff. Yep. That's its main purpose. So you can break pots of it, or here, obviously, we can step on the first one, but we can't get on the second. Yep. Um, we can do that, and obviously, I've got to wait now to, because of that little demonstration, but. Um, but that's not all. Although, again, Ezlo is just going to tell us before we can try and work it out. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't just flip things. You can also throw it in holes and then use that energy to kind of bounce you up, which is very weird, but quite cool. Yeah, it doesn't make much sense. So it flips things, but also can launch Link forward. But whatever. Uh, at least we know okay, it does that. Point. So here, you can just do uh -huh. that. So that, yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. To get another fun ride on a minecart. Uh -huh. These chests are so weird. Up, yeah. You have to just push it into, like, a area to where it can, like, become yeah, a right? ground like, level. Why is there just... Why is there a chest, like, on a pole? Yeah. I don't know. Wouldn't you think Link would just stand on his, like, tiptoes and, and just pick up the chest and he'll be good, but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> At least you can enjoy I do more love that sound. Yeah, right? yeah, no, it's so mm -hmm. hilarious it on loop. Again, uh, especially with it being Young I Link's the... voice, uh, not Toon Link, which was... are different. Uh, wait, what? Exactly. Was the locked door up here? Oh, yeah, of course it was. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. We've got a key, but I forgot where the door yeah, was. And a yeah, portal, right. I guess, you know, if you want a short And a portal, back to the yeah. Or vice uh -huh. versa. Um, but yeah, um, this dungeon, it can feel, uh, I think compared to the Deepwood Shrine, which is um, it is, it's very, it's a beginner dungeon, obviously, so it's very simple, but it's it's also quite simple in the way it's laid out. The Cave of Flames, at least I remember from playing this as a kid, I remember feeling a little bit overwhelmed getting to this dungeon as the second one. Yeah, um, it's... But it really isn't, it isn't that difficult. Uh -huh. It's not actually a hard dungeon. It just... I don't know, I think it's something about the atmosphere and the vibe of it makes it feel worse than it is. What yeah. Do you think? yeah, I agree. And the design is a lot different. So, like, unlike the previous dungeon where you had different rooms with screen transitions and, you know, you can't, everything was contained in that one room. Like, for example, this room, you're literally going to a completely different area, like a completely different room to then mess with, like, the minecart and railing system to then affect it somewhere else. So it's like... The rooms feel a lot bigger and more expansive, and you know, like, yeah, it, it keeps going. And because of that, everything's kind of connected. Which, yeah, I do feel like it's a bit more overwhelming than like the first dungeon, where everything was separated. But I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah. No, I think um, it's actually. I, I think it is well designed. Uh, I yeah. do like the puzzles here. Um, 
I love the music as well of Cave of Flames. I just think it hits so hard. Yeah. Um, I've been a huge fan of the atmosphere or music of this area. It's always seemed like a gloomy dungeon to me. Uh, mainly because, like I mentioned before, the fire isn't that present for it being the Cave of Flames. Um, it's more uh -huh. so dealing with the the rusted and busted mine. And the the <laughs> mine card egg that you have. <laughs> there we go. Reset the clock. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool dungeon. I think, you know, second dungeon has to be fire, doesn't it? If you start with forest. Yeah. Um, oh, it was fire. Nice blue for sure. That's a fire dungeon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but no, no, you're right. No, it is the tradition. It's like, you know, first is the green forest. Second is usually the fire flame. And then third is usually water. Um, I don't, does that apply in this game? I think it does, right? No. Yeah. Um, is well, the third one? Sort of. Is, like there the is third, a water one, but I don't know if it's... The third element is water, yeah, yeah or kind of technically ice, but still, you know, water. Uh -huh. um, but we have to go somewhere else first, but it's, it is a dungeon. Obviously, we go, you know, the Fortress of Winds we'll go to next. Um, but it kind of feels like half a dungeon because you don't actually unlock an element there. Uh, but we'll see that soon anyway. Uh -huh. Oh, no. Okay, I'm, you tried to rush Completely it. messed that up. Yeah. Yeah, I got carried away there. Uh-huh. Um, which wouldn't have even have worked because that would have gone up and then it would have run out. Yeah. This room design is, is interesting because you have the boss keys here, uh, just kind of out of your reach because uh -huh. you need to get higher up. But then also yeah. the boss door is here and it's just this huge platforming room. It's pretty cool, but it's crazy like this is the end of oh. the dungeon essentially. You, you can get the, once you uh -huh. get the key, you'll be able to go through it and yeah. Might as well do that now instead of uh, try to do it last second because these platforms yeah exactly last. yeah <laughs> uh-huh but yeah you're right this is kind of like um this is the dungeon's main room i think definitely um and it is yeah it's it's, it's huge actually and you, you come back to this room a few different times in different places oh no, no, no okay go 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 go, go. Oh, okay. you can make it you can make it i should be good i should be good yeah, yeah fine. Okay. there you go because falling off uh -huh. yeah you'd have to restart uh, that whole thing. Yeah, that would have been annoying. Yep. Um, do I go left or right? You're definitely going to come back there, but I'm not sure if you have to do that uh -huh. now. Um, we'll see. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, you're for chess. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, green kinstone. Why not? Yeah. Uh, are those random? Oh, or no? The, that green kinstone um, or... Yeah, so green kinstones are random. Um... As in, the fuses you do with uh, green kinstones, they're, they're different. Uh, so you need different stones fused with different people, and they'll do different things. Obviously, there's, you know, a set number of different things that can happen. Like, green kinstones open up the same things in the overworld, but they're all random when you do it. Blue and red kinstones are the ones that are always the same, um, no matter which run of the game you're on. Um, but in terms of which ones you find in the chest, so, I'd, yeah, I don't know. So, like... The green kinstone we got there. I don't know whether that's random, whether that would be, you know, like a, a little triangle piece, for example, or what shape. I don't know. Uh huh. Um, I guess we'll figure out when we yeah. trade it. That's that's another example there of the depth perception just being a little bit weird. You no, know, it's literally the game is like it corrects you. It's like okay, well you're not gonna make it, but you want to go there, so Link's gonna have this weird boost. And he's just gonna all of a sudden make it. Like I'm not even like when you look at it, exactly. it looks really bizarre yeah. even. But yeah, it's clearly the game is not programmed to truly be fair in doing this, right? Um, it 100% uh -huh. wants you to just get close enough, and the game will just launch you up. Oh, you're missing a chest though. You didn't pick up the classified oh. chest. I mean, it's not. I don't doubt it's of that course. important. Yeah. But There's a chest down. Yeah. Oh, no. um, you're gonna probably want to go back up, go through the tornado. Thing, yeah, and ride it uh, back. I mean, uh, again, I don't know if you need it. Let's have a look. I don't. I don't think you can even ride the tornado back. over. Oh, the, okay. No. Well, then screw uh, it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that chest is rupees. Okay, uh, then, and you have a max wallet, so. Which, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hope it's not anything else. Um, but we'll see. If I have to come back, I have to come back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. There is one down in the corner. Another green kinstone. Nice. Uh, you never have too many kinstones. We picked up the heart piece. I already forgot. Honestly. You did, right? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. and that's uh -huh. the only one here. So, I mean, that's all that matters outside of the boss key, which we're going to get right now. Um, Aside from really this, matters. the boss key, yep. Yeah. 
Uh huh. Which, yeah, I think, yeah, we, well, I mean, we got it's showing the compass the this time, missed, which is good. But other uh, than that, showing the chest I missed. You're good. But yeah, other than that, we seem pretty good. Except the boss. Yep. Um, but yeah, you're right, it's uh, not far away. Obviously, we'll turn on our little portal. Yeah, and the boss room also connects to this giant chamber. Yep. Yeah, the second you get the boss key, it's time for the boss. There's, there's no waiting. Um, it, it's a short dungeon, but again, short and sweet, and it's what you'd expect from one of the earlier dungeons. In the game. Um, exactly, yeah. Um, and this feels very much oh, like yeah. uh, Speaking uh, of Ocarina of Time. King Dodongo, don't you think? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's yeah, literally like the mind. exact yeah. same room before the boss fight. So you got little lava pit uh -huh. in the middle with the hole in the ground. It's so cool. Um, and if anything, you can hear exactly what you heard in Ocarina of Time as you jump down as Young Link. At least the voice, <laughs> right? Yeah. You ready? All right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Do you see so here Young we go Link for... when you play as this Link? Or do you see Toon Link? Or do you see Minish Link? I think I see Toon Link. I see, um, but yeah, the one that the one that's on the box art, you know. Yeah. Um, even though there's blue eyes, that he has a voice. It's still, but I agree. It's exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But yeah, this dungeon's boss is Glee Rock, so um, obviously inspired or named after. Oh, I think I had a couple more seconds there. <laughs> named after Glee Rock, uh, yep. like a classic boss slash enemy from Zelda One, uh -huh. uh, and now kind of back in. The public mindset, you know, he returned like the Lionel did in Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, because if, uh, if you were saying, oh, this is cool. Glee Rock, some people might have not gotten it if they haven't played Tears of the Kingdom. If you haven't played the original Zelda game, uh, you know, that name might be lost uh -huh. to you. But, I mean, yeah, now it's back in, you know, like the Zelda universe. Like, immediately when you think of Blue Rock, you think of a badass. And you write Lionel, too. Lionel was pretty much forgotten up until Breath of the Wild. Uh, and now is one of the coolest, you know, enemies within the exactly. series. Exactly, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm so glad. Uh, uh, that's one of my favorite things that they did in those games. Like, the Hinox as well. Uh, yeah. I think the Hinox was only in, uh, what, like, Link's Awakening, A Link to the Past. Uh, A Link to Worlds, obviously. Um, but yeah, really not in much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Gleok in particular, obviously in Tears of the Kingdom and Zelda 1, it was a, a three-headed, or multi-headed, I should say, dragon. Yep. Uh, oh, nice, that that's that cool. Uh, I, I don't remember <laughs> seeing that. That's really cool. So Link can have like a Yeah, you do like the, uh, Mario the thing moment. from Mario. Yeah, there. where his butt's on fire, <laughs> exactly. so he runs. Yeah. So, but you don't hear him screaming, but I mean, he clearly was. Yeah, screaming. right. So, but, yeah, no, uh, Glee Rock, again, freaking cool-ass name, too, you know? I guess because it's uh -huh. very rock-based. Uh, you know, you gotta add rock with it. I like it. I, I think the overall this boss battle is really cool, but very gimmicky. I mean, it's, I feel like it's, no, no, let's be honest, even with the 3D Zelda games, they're all like, figure out the, the one thing you need to do, usually with the dungeon's item, rinse, repeat that until you know it's dead. And, and that's it. I feel, exactly. like, I feel like Nintendo yeah. all together, not just in the Zelda franchise, in, in all of their games, their bosses follow the same formula all the time but nice there you go and you teleport to the bottom of the room for some reason when you beat him yeah but. makes it easier you there we go. have an animation of link escaping or anything uh-huh and uh also like king dodongo yep. the lava pool dries up yeah in the middle of the room which uh, <laughs> yeah very similar oh, and here so it is cool. the fire element yep. which don't you think that looks like the Goron's room? It looks ruby, so similar, especially right? when you saw the logo before you picked it up, you know, like, glowing on the ground. Uh-huh. It would literally... Yeah, because then after, like, the, the, uh... I don't know how to describe it, like, the spikes or the, the fingers or whatever, they mm -hmm. were, like, separated, like it is on the Goron, uh... Like, the Goron emblem. Yeah. We'll have to have a look at the Gorons in this game, see if they have that symbol on it. Uh-huh. Um, because maybe they, t maybe they took inspiration from the fire element. Right, yeah, the fire element is, must you know, have some connection to them, but it, it is it is interesting because the Gorons don't inhabit Mount Krenel, or they don't really inhabit anything. There's, there's no Goron city, Goron land within the Minish Cap. They're just kind of all over the place. Um, exactly. Yeah, they're like a uh, nomadic, like in the Wind Waker. Yeah, exactly like the Wind Waker. They just Waker. kind of yeah. travel around without a home. Yep. Um, 
But have you noticed these? <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. The dragons. It's so on, cool. Yeah, uh -huh. that is so badass. There's little dragon designs on the walls. Not just up front like that, but like even on the side, they, they look even but bigger. But on the sides as well. Yeah, they look yeah. much bigger. Uh -huh. uh, oh, it's so cool. It's very cool, yeah. So it's like the head of Glee Rock, and you can even kind as of see rock, part of his yo, shell here. That's, uh -huh. that's why as a rock. Yo, yeah. it's literally Glee Rock. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which is cool. Yeah, really cool boss room. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There's like five more Glee Rocks just in the walls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there we go. Eslo's happy to be to be out. Yeah. Uh, he didn't like it. His fibers felt like they were going to catch on fire. Mm. But anyway, the, the whole reason we went there, except the fire element, was just to give old Malari some time to fix our sword. Yeah, true. So why don't we uh, see what he's been up to in that time? Yep. Oh, look at that. He glued back there the Kukori sword and somehow it turned green and completely <laughs> changed it turned green. shape yeah. and color and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a white sword now. <laughs> it's not the Pokori sword. Yeah. Here we go. The white sword. Uh, oh. There we go. Yeah. We. Uh, yeah. We, you. I mean, I think you're gonna say the same thing. Yep. Uh, but we skipped that in episode one. But yeah, Smith is Link's grandfather, yeah, not he, uncle. Yeah, because he called grandfather's sword. So yeah, um, it makes sense now. That was Link's grandfather. Uh huh. But now screw his grandfather's sword. Exactly. He got a way better sword. The white sword. So. We, we the white sword, yeah. So Malari's telling us now that the white sword, we can imbue it with the power of the elements. Yep. Uh, only in the elemental sanctuary, which is apparently a place that only becomes accessible once every hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we'll just make our way to the elemental sanctuary then. Unless, I don't think there's... There might be some kinstone fusions or something we can do here. None of these want to fuse. Do uh -huh. you want to fuse? I love how they um, they rotate around Link, like when you're sitting like that. And so the oh, it's so it's great. So like, detailed. Look at that, like, yeah, like it looks almost 3D. Look at those. Uh -huh. so the extra angles. sprites they created just for that. Yeah, uh -huh. yep. Such nice. That's detail. the thing. This game it, it just has so much like attention to detail. Mm -hmm. You're right. Uh, I don't think there's. Maybe there are some fusions. I'm. I don't know. That's a cool room. We, we have What's to come back of, anyway. because yeah. I th uh, So I think this is Malari's room. I'm pretty sure this is where you come back to find him later on in the game. Yeah. Because uh, he has a one of the set kin Kinstone fusions. So I, I can't remember if it's a red or a blue one. Um, <laughs> but we'll see that later. Uh, but we do have to descend Mount Krennel now. And there is one thing uh, that I forgot to do on our ascent. Which is uh, there's a, a helpful... I don't know what you'd call it. Helpful spirit? I don't know. It's a fairy. It's a great fairy. Okay. I guess it's a fairy. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah. Might as well not play around it. Say it that way. Straight up say, yeah. Uh -huh. there's, there's a helpful great fairy that we can get. <laughs> I hate tech types so much. In every game, they they are the most annoying. I think they they could be the most consistently annoying Zelda enemy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This is a testament to how well Nintendo has designed the enemy. Like, <laughs> They feel the yeah, same exactly. in every to... game. They're so <laughs> annoying. Even in 3D as well. They made the jump perfectly. They kept every bit of their annoying. They literally made the around. jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but again, this is. Okay, well, there goes that sign, yeah. I guess. Uh, but that's another very kind of inconspicuous spot to place a bomb. Mm -hmm. And here we are. So this is uh, not just a fairy fountain, this is a great fairy fountain. Uh, and it seems like there's nothing to do, so uh, let's bail. <laughs> no, but you can... Uh, <laughs> so, these fairy fountains work a little bit like A Link to the Past. We had to throw something in and give something to the great fairy This is a bit disturbing. As we're going to wake her up, throw a bomb in. You know, get up! <laughs> <laughs> bomb in, yeah. It's a bit of a rude awakening. Uh, but yeah, cool design for the great fairies in this game. Yep. From going from that blue little navy looking fairy and then transforms, this is what's really underneath. Uh -huh. You know, fairies disguise. It's a beautiful giant yeah. elf woman thing with cool uh, you know, <laughs> wings. I don't know. I don't know. How to <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool that. Uh, so it's kind of an honesty test. Uh, the great fairies in this game, which I, I find quite cool. That the way that a lot of collectibles in Zelda they're always based around greed and like why greed is bad. You know, like the House of Skulltula in Ocarina of Time, Giovanni and Twilight Princess. Yep. Um, and then the fairies, which are obviously a good thing, uh, they're about like the virtues of being honest. They always ask you a question, and we can lie. So obviously we threw in a regular bomb, uh, but I can't remember what happens if we do. If you say gold, I don't think it's red. good. And what a weird thing. I kind of so want to try say, it. Is she going to give you a golden bomb in return? Oh, okay, you drop this. Here you go. Like, 
It is a bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to try it? Should we try it? I mean, you can't lock yourself out of it, I'm sure. Like, you can just uh, come back? You just might run out of... I think we'll run out of bombs. I think she'll drain our bombs. Okay, here we, we can, have another You can do something. It. Here. Create a su suspend uh -huh. point, and then do it, and then quickly reload it. Okay. Let's say... Let's say gold. Yeah. You're lying. You're lying. <laughs> That's for, okay, there you go. That's what I thought. Wow, he gets shot. electrocuted. Yeah, that is hilarious. Wow. And just, but that's not Very crazy violent. losing your bombs. Like, you can get uh -huh. It's more of a, a nuisance than anything. It just means we can't now do, do it, it again. until we reload. Yep. Uh, uh, now we, <laughs> let's see, you now see we can silver? be honest. Might as well see silver. It'll take one second. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's got to be the same thing. Yeah. Nah, oh, <laughs> she's okay. not happy with that either. <laughs> a little bit more electrocution. <laughs> and. <laughs> Off she goes. Yep. Okay. Right now, okay, let's tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Neither. You are honest. And there we get, go. Yeah, Big bomb bag. So carry more bombs. 30 bombs. Uh-huh. That's, that's quite handy. But what if, like, you were confused as a player? You're like, well, I, I don't remember the color. You know, okay, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. But if you're, like, colorblind, can you be blue-gold colorblind? I don't know. I don't know, actually, but in the contrast of blue is so dark, I feel like you'd be able to tell. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. Um, you know, if you're colorblind on so I don't know, that's the dumbest <laughs> thing to request, but <laughs> whatever. Um, uh -huh. uh, yeah, so now with that done, that's it for that great fairy, right? It's really cool, because that's reminiscent of A Link to the Past, where you throw in an item and she upgrades it. This time, you just throw in one bomb, she upgrades your whole bomb bag. But in concept, it is pretty cool. Weird, though, because... You know, Nintendo kind of stopped doing that with the Great Fairies. The Great Fairies just mainly heal you and don't really give you actual upgrades anymore. I mean, technically, no, because in Tears of Kingdom Breath of the Wild, they upgrade your um, I suppose they upgrade your armor. armor. Yeah. yeah. So they, they still uh -huh. kind of do that, which I guess is more traditional. I mean, I guess the Great Fairies always have upgrade you to some extent. Um, just not necessarily items like that. Yeah. Right? It, that, to me, just like, seems Ocarina more time, they... Ocarina of Time, they don't upgrade you, but they give you new things. Yeah, right? well, you, you could like, say the, the magic, magic meter is an upgrade, essentially. Oh, uh, true. Yeah, you get to... Yeah, the hearts magic are an upgrade. And, uh, uh, yeah, they still upgrade just uh, different things. Oh, of course. No, they do. Isn't... There's one that increases your defense, right, as well in Ocarina? The... Yeah, 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 you get white The one hearts. by Ganon's Castle, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they do upgrade you. Yep. Um, but yeah, now we've got this cane, we can access a few new places in the overworld, which, yeah, again, it's a very strange way to traverse around the world, but, you know, it works. Why not? Just do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think... Okay, there's nothing down here. Again, this is another little tease of what we'll be able to do in the future. Go in the water, now. right? Little, yeah. <laughs> little stairs going down into just death at the moment. Yep. This but also reminds me of A Link to the Past. You know, you, you notice that you can maybe come out of the water, but how do you get in? Well, you gotta get the item for it. Again, it is Metroidvania. That's the best way to describe these kind of, you know, uh, backtracking of gameplay. Uh -huh. And that might not be the best way to describe it, but, you know, I feel like that's what most people think of when they think of this kind of gameplay. Exactly. And, like, here's a good example. Like, we'll, we know we'll have to come back to this later yep. because... Once uh, whatever that makes we don't sense. Know. It is glowing. Once whatever this is makes sense. Exactly. We, we don't understand what this is. But that's kind of why it's so satisfying because you make your way around the world and you see all these things. And then, yeah, I know some people don't like backtracking. But I think, you know, if, it, if it's done well, it is quite good because you, you see the things that you need to remember. And then you come back when you're more powerful and have the abilities. You get trolled by a bat. <laughs> Um, but that's another thing that I think the Wind Waker did really well. Like, a lot of the Wind Waker's islands are gated behind particular items. So, although you get access to the whole Great Sea... Well, I just got absolutely sniped. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. Oh, here. <laughs> so, although you can access the whole sea, uh, you know, quite soon into the game, there's a lot of islands that you can't do anything with right at the start. Uh, and then it is satisfying to get an item and think, oh, that means this item will unlock this on this island and then go back to where you've already been. And, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing. Yep. Um, well, okay, so what's the next objective? Okay. I guess it's to temper the sword that we should be... Yeah, so to Malari told us we need to imbue the sword with the elements and coincidentally, we we've already got two elements. And you Fancy couldn't... That. You wouldn't be able to come here until finishing the Cave of Flames or could you actually come here after the first element? 
That'd be kind of cool. But I guess it wouldn't make I'm sense. Not, I don't think Because the Bacori sword, oh, you couldn't. Because the Bacori well, sword isn't even fixed. It hasn't been glued exactly, to the white yeah. sword. The, that, the Bacori sword, uh, Bacori blade's broken. But then I'm sure that this won't be here. Uh-huh. Otherwise, there is kind of like a sequence break. There'll be something. There'll be like guards blocking you or... Maybe even this doorway's not open, because, as Eslo says, no one else can see this. This is the, the gateway between worlds that opens once every hundred years, and it's the, the portal between our world and the world where the Minish originally came from. Yep. But, um, I mean, I guess we'll, we'll see what's inside in the next episode. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, we'll see you then.